If they reach space in force, it's over for all of us. Humanity must be classified a god-level threat. Viron the Arcturian slammed his clawed fist on the crystalline conference table. It cracked slightly. The Galactic Council erupted in hushed murmurs of alarm and disbelief. Preposterous, scoffed the gelatinous Blavorian ambassador. Look at them, primates barely a million years from banging rocks together. Viron's head tendrils pulsed crimson with rage. You fool! Their weapons tech is already near hegemony level, and their rate of development, it's like nothing we've ever seen. The chamber fell silent. Viron took a deep breath, forcing calm into his voice. My fellow counsellors, if we do not act now, these humans will inherit the stars, and when they do... He paused, mandibles clicking grimly. There will not be a force in this universe that can stop them. The Galactic Council Chamber buzzed with heated debate as the representatives argued over the best course of action. Some called for immediate military intervention, while others advocated for a more diplomatic approach. Amidst the chaos, Theron, a respected Arcturian diplomat, raised his voice. Counselors, please. We cannot rush to judgment. These humans, while undeniably advanced, may not yet fully comprehend the implications of their actions. I propose we send a delegation to Earth to establish first contact and assess their potential threat level firsthand. The chamber fell silent as the counselors considered Theron's proposal. Viron, still seething with barely contained rage, spoke up. And what if they prove hostile, Theron? What if your diplomacy fails? Theron met Viron's gaze unflinchingly. Then we will have the information we need to act decisively, but we must give them a chance. After hours of deliberation, the Council reluctantly agreed to Theron's plan. A small delegation, led by Theron himself, was dispatched to the Sol system. As their ship dropped out of hyperspace on the outskirts of the system, alarms immediately began to blare. Sir, we're being targeted by multiple tracking systems, the navigator reported, panic creeping into his voice. Theron frowned. Impossible. They shouldn't have the technology to detect us at this range. He leaned forward, studying the readouts. The humans' early warning systems were far more advanced than the Council had anticipated. They had underestimated them. On Earth, the sudden appearance of an unknown spacecraft in the solar system sent shockwaves through the global community. World leaders convened an emergency meeting to discuss the unprecedented event. Do we have any idea what we're dealing with here? the U.S. President asked, her brow furrowed with concern. The Secretary of Defense shook his head. Our experts are still analyzing the data, but one thing is clear, that ship is not of human origin. A tense silence filled the room as the implications sank in. Humanity had always suspected they might not be alone in the universe, but to have that suspicion confirmed in such a dramatic fashion was staggering. We need to establish contact the Chinese president insisted. This could be the most significant moment in human history. Back in orbit, Theron and his crew attempted to hail the humans on every frequency they could think of, but were met with only silence. Hey, they're not responding, the communications officer said, frustration evident in her voice. Theron tapped his claws on the armrest of his chair, deep in thought. Keep trying. They may not understand our language, or they could be afraid. We must be patient. As the delegation waited for a response, Theron couldn't shake the growing sense of unease in the pit of his stomach. He watched the viewscreen as human military satellites and vessels began to converge on their location, forming a defensive perimeter around the planet. The humans were mobilizing their forces, and Theron knew that any misstep could lead to a disastrous confrontation. He only hoped that the Council's worst fears about humanity would not be realized. As the world held its breath, watching the skies for any sign of the alien visitors, a shadowy group was already plotting their next move. They called themselves Earth First, and their leader was a man named Damien Blackwood. He was charismatic, ruthless, and utterly convinced that the aliens were here to subjugate humanity. We cannot trust them, Blackwood said, his voice low and intense as he addressed his inner circle. They come here, unannounced, and expect us to welcome them with open arms. 
No, my friends. They have a plan, and that plan is to enslave us all. His followers nodded in agreement, their eyes gleaming with a fervor that bordered on madness. They had all heard the rumors, the whispers of advanced technology that the government was keeping hidden from the public. Technology that had been reverse-engineered from salvaged alien artifacts. We have the means to fight back, Blackwood continued, a smile playing at the corners of his mouth. And we will use those means to send a message to these invaders. Earth is not theirs for the taking. In a secure bunker deep beneath the surface, Earth First's hackers worked tirelessly to penetrate the alien delegation's communication systems. It was a daunting task, but they were driven by a sense of purpose that bordered on obsession. Days turned into weeks, and the world watched as the alien ships continued to orbit the planet, silent and unmoving. The tension was palpable, and it seemed as though the slightest provocation could spark a conflict that would engulf the entire world. And then it happened. The hackers broke through the alien encryption, and what they found confirmed their worst fears. The aliens spoke of Earth as though it were already theirs, discussing plans for colonization and resource extraction. They even mentioned the possibility of pacifying the human population if they proved to be too much of a nuisance. Blackwood's face was a mask of cold fury as he listened to the intercepted communications. You see, he said, his voice barely above a whisper, they come here with talk of peace and cooperation, but their true intentions are clear. They mean to subjugate us, to strip us of our freedom and our dignity. He turned to his followers, his eyes blazing with righteous anger. But we will not let that happen. We will fight and we will win, for Earth and for all of humanity. The attack came without warning. One moment the alien ships were orbiting peacefully above the planet's surface. The next they were engulfed in a barrage of missiles and energy weapons, their hulls buckling and rupturing under the onslaught. On the bridge of the lead ship, Theron could only watch in horror as his fellow delegates were vaporized before his eyes. Alarms blared and warning lights flashed, but it was already too late. The humans had caught them completely off guard, and they were paying the price for their complacency. Evasive maneuvers! Theron shouted, his voice barely audible over the chaos. Get us out of here! The pilot, a young Arcturian named Zaxos, did his best to comply, but the ship was already badly damaged. Consoles exploded in showers of sparks, and the acrid smell of burning circuitry filled the air. Somehow, through sheer force of will and a healthy dose of luck, Zaxos managed to guide the crippled vessel to the edge of the Sol system. Behind them, the wreckage of the once-proud Federation fleet drifted in the void, a testament to the humans' ruthlessness and ingenuity. Theron slumped in his chair, his head in his hands. He had come here hoping to forge a new era of peace and understanding between their two species. Instead, he had led his people into a trap, and now the blood of countless innocents was on his hands. As the ship limped away from Earth, Theron knew that the Council had been right all along, the humans were a threat, a danger to the entire galaxy, and now it was up to him to find a way to stop them before it was too late. The Galactic Council Chamber was in an uproar. The surviving members of the delegation to Earth had just finished their report, and the details of the unprovoked attack by the humans sent shockwaves through the assembly. Viron was on his feet in an instant, his claws digging into the podium as he addressed the Council. You see... This is exactly what I warned you about. The humans are a menace, a threat to the very fabric of our society. They must be dealt with swiftly and decisively. There were murmurs of agreement from many of the councillors, but others looked uncertain. Theron, still shaken from his narrow escape, stood to speak. I understand your anger, Viron, he said, his voice trembling slightly. But we must not let our emotions cloud our judgment. The humans who attacked us were a fringe group, not representative of their entire species. Viron rounded on Theron, his eyes blazing with fury. A fringe group? They had access to advanced weaponry, technology that should have been far beyond their capabilities, and they used it against us without hesitation. No, Theron, this is not the work of a few extremists. This is the true face of humanity, 
and we must respond accordingly. The debate raged on for hours, with each side presenting their arguments and counter-arguments. In the end, however, Viron's position won out. The Council voted to assemble a massive fleet, the largest in the history of the Federation, to invade Earth and bring the humans to heel. As the Council adjourned, Theron caught up with Viron in the corridor outside. You're making a mistake, he said, his voice low and urgent. An invasion will only lead to more bloodshed on both sides. The humans are not a race to be underestimated. Viron regarded Theron coldly. You had your chance, diplomat. You failed. Now it's time for a more direct approach. Theron shook his head. There's another way. Let me infiltrate their society, gather intelligence on their weaknesses. We can use that knowledge to launch a surprise attack, minimize our losses and theirs. Viron considered this for a moment, then nodded slowly. Very well, but you will have a limited window of opportunity. If you do not deliver results quickly, we will proceed with the invasion as planned. Theron bowed his head in acknowledgement, his mind already racing with the challenges that lay ahead. He would need to be careful, to blend in seamlessly with the humans and avoid detection at all costs. But if he succeeded, he could save countless lives on both sides of the conflict. As he made his way back to his quarters to begin preparations for his mission, Theron couldn't shake the feeling that he was walking a razor's edge. One misstep, one moment of carelessness, and everything could come crashing down around him. But he had to try. For the sake of the Federation, and for the future of both their species, he had to find a way to prevent the coming war, no matter the cost. As the Federation fleet approached Earth, Damian Blackwood rallied humanity under a single banner. Old rivalries and disputes were set aside in the face of annihilation. It was unite or die. People of Earth, Blackwood's voice boomed from every screen and speaker on the planet. The time has come to stand together against those who would see us subjugated. We did not start this fight, but by God, we will finish it. Millions took to the streets, their faces set with grim determination. Factories churned out weapons and ships day and night. Soldiers drilled tirelessly, honing their skills with the reverse-engineered alien tech. In the heart of it all stood Blackwood, orchestrating the defense like a conductor before a symphony of destruction, and at his side, an unexpected ally, Theron. The Arcturian had seen the truth during his time among the humans. They were not the savages Viron painted them as, but a species fighting for their right to exist, and so he made the most difficult decision of his life. He betrayed his own kind to stand with Earth. They will hit us hard and fast, Theron warned Blackwood as they pored over holographic battle plans. The Federation's tactics rely on overwhelming force and shock value. Blackwood nodded, his eyes glinting with a predatory light. Then we'll give them a shock they'll never forget. Together, they devised a plan as daring as it was desperate. Earth's fleet would lure the Federation into the asteroid belt, where a network of AI-controlled drones lay in wait. As the enemy took the bait, the drones swarmed them like angry hornets. Shields failed and hulls ruptured under the onslaught. The Federation's rigid formations crumbled into chaos. And that's when Earth's main fleet struck. Led by Blackwood himself, they tore into the disarrayed Federation ships with a fury born of desperation. Theron, in a commandeered Federation fighter, danced through the battle with deadly grace. The Federation had never faced an enemy like this one that could adapt on the fly, that refused to cower or surrender. And as more and more of their ships fell silent, a grim realization began to set in. They had underestimated the humans, and that mistake would cost them dearly. In the end, it was the Federation that fled, their once mighty fleet reduced to a limping shadow of its former self. Earth had stood against the greatest power in the known universe and emerged victorious. But even as the people of Earth celebrated their triumph, Blackwood and Theron knew that the real fight was just beginning. The Federation would not forget this humiliation. They would be back with a vengeance. And Earth needed to be ready, ready to take its place among the stars, 
not as a conquered vassal but as a force to be reckoned with. In the weeks that followed, Theron worked tirelessly to broker a peace treaty between Earth and the Federation. It was a delicate balancing act, one that required all of his diplomatic skills. But he was driven by a newfound purpose. He had seen firsthand the potential of the human race, their courage, their inventiveness, their sheer stubborn refusal to give up. They deserved a chance to forge their own destiny. And so, after countless hours of negotiations and compromises, the treaty was signed. Earth would be recognized as a sovereign power, with all the rights and responsibilities that entailed. It was a new beginning for both humanity and the galaxy as a whole. And as Theron stood beside Blackwood, watching the ink dry on the historic document, he couldn't help but feel a sense of pride. Pride in the humans who had defied all odds to stand tall among the stars, and pride in himself for having the courage to stand with them. The road ahead would not be easy. There would be challenges and setbacks, enemies both old and new. But one thing was certain. Earth would never again be underestimated, and the galaxy would never be the same. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.